I have been there, like many of you, where I was living from paycheck to paycheck, earning a minimum wage salary with a young child. And thank God I had some help, but nevertheless, it was still a struggle. What I'm gonna tell you today is exactly how I left that stage and got to a place where I could consistently live a good life and invest up to 50% of my earnings. I'm not sharing something that I've read in a book. As you will see in my book, these are all things that I have done and I am sharing my strategy with you. That said, listen carefully to the specific steps that I took to stop living from paycheck to paycheck and open up your mind to doing things a little bit different so that you can achieve that goal as well. Now, if you're not living paycheck to paycheck, you will find information in this video that will help you as well. And now, with the base income in place that's allowing you to live well, you will use this knowledge that I'm about to share to maximize your earning potential. As usual, I'm gonna give it my all today. So subscribe as a thank you and you know, as a trade from my time and me trying to figure out what your needs are and address them in this video. And remember to like the video if you find value in it. Let's jump right into it. I can control anything if I can just think carefully. I control my destiny. Now there are seven steps that you must take to step away from this life of living paycheck to paycheck. The first is you need to evaluate how you're living to determine if it's a money management issue. It may be that you're spending more than you should. The only way to determine if you're spending more than you need to or more than you can afford to is to document your spending habits and compare them to what you're earning. And what do we call that? We call it a budget. Now a lot of us have this budget in our head that we live by and we think it's sufficient but I can tell you for a fact that until it goes on paper, it's hypothetical. So you need to put that budget on paper so that you can start looking at all your income sources and comparing them to all your expenses to see where the loophole is, why you may be living outside of your means. So this is option one. We're gonna cover several other options, so stay tuned. Now in my book, I share in details exactly how to create a budget. You even get the format. But let me give you some high level information. If you need more details, I recommend you get it. But when you're creating that budget, here's what it needs to include. It needs to include all your sources of income. If you have investments, it needs to include the interest that you are paid or the return on your investments, which is ROI. You need to, if you're getting technical, you need to include inflation. You need to consider FX devaluation, which is the devaluation of the currency that you are budgeting in. You also need to ensure it includes all your expenses. Now this pie chart here will tell you of all your expenses, what percentage should be in a certain bucket. And this pie chart is also coming from my book. For example, your mortgage or your rent should not be more than 20, worst case 30% of your income. Your transportation costs, that's if you have a car or if you use public transportation, 10 to 15%. Utilities, 5 to 10%. And there's a long list that I've extracted from my book, but this pie chart will give you an idea. Now guys, the sun is coming out. You probably can see it on my face. You see the things I do for you? Subscribe and like the video, please. No, this is getting really hot, guys. I'm gonna switch spots. Give me a minute. Now, when you create this budget, you don't just put it down like ice in freezer, as we like to say in Jamaica. You need to update it regularly. 
So your budget needs to include what you project you will spend or what you plan to spend and then a column that says what you actually spend and then there's a difference. You need to make sure that every time you spend based on that expense line, you update what you actually spent and then compare it to what you said you would have spent. And if you're finding that on more occasions you are spending more than you said you would that's probably why you're living paycheck to paycheck yeah the sun wasn't tolerable guys i started to sweat let's say for example on your budget you have 200 dollars for food which means your groceries and anything like that now let's say you find when you add up what you spend for the entire month that you're spending 250 dollars you know that's a red flag and then you have to listen to the other call outs that i'm gonna make here because there are actions that you need to take and i'll tell you exactly what they are but you need to start with the basics projected actual differences and you flag every expense that's trending more than you projected to spend now if you are looking for a budget template you can buy my ebook which is less than ten dollars and it will come with a template that you can use or you can get a free one just go to everydollar.com and you can use that budget tool to track your projected expenses against your actual expenses and then look at your income and subtract it from your expenditure to understand exactly where you need to make the strategic moves to stop living paycheck to paycheck. The typical problem area that I see is usually food. We like dining out, but we don't want to admit it. We love buying fast food and the expenses add up over time. Or we love to go to a party. That's another area that's usually more than what you budgeted to spend. However, what is critical is that you put that budget together ahead of you spending that money. Because you obviously cannot manage money after the fact. Now another factor that you're going to have to consider on this journey to stop living paycheck to paycheck is are you spending and overspending on your wants? Notice I said wants and not needs because there's a difference. Your needs are those things you can't live without. Clothing, shelter and food. Your wants are those things that you can live without. But society, especially with the advent of social media, sometimes convinces us that our wants are our needs. You need to separate the two on this path to you not living paycheck to paycheck. Do you know how many times I go to the grocery store or the hardware and I go with a mind to buy a few things and I leave with many things that I wasn't prepared to buy or didn't plan to buy or was not in my budget. I'm sure that's probably happening to many of you as well more often than not. Here are a few tips that you can use to curve that habit. The first one is to make a list. Every single time I'm going to the supermarket when I got to the point where I didn't want to live this way I made a list. And that list included what I needed and it included a few wants if it was necessary. But I would always estimate the value of that list and compare it to what's in my budget to ensure that I'm on track. Also, when you get to that supermarket, don't go in the aisles just casually unless your list is taking you into the aisle because you're gonna be tempted if you lack discipline so avoid those aisles where nothing of interest is based on what's on your list the third one and this one is no joke guys do not go grocery shopping on a hungry belly you will be tempted to buy all kind of things and when you're hungry it looks really nice but by the time you get home you realize it's not as good as it looked when you were hungry after you have had dinner another key step to not overspending on your wants is whenever you buy something you need to go back and look at your budget for that item 
and you need to update it. Don't wait until the month is done because that way you will see long before you get to the end of your budgetary period, whether that's a week or a month, that you are overspending and you have an opportunity to correct it before it's too late. So update your budget after you spend every single time and be diligent in your approach. When you do that, you will experience two emotions. You're gonna feel like you're succeeding from a financial perspective if you are constantly spending less than what's in your budget as your projection. So if your actual is less than your projection, you're gonna feel like a hero. You're gonna feel pretty stupid On the other side, if repeatedly, when you go to update your actuals versus your projected, you're constantly spending more than you said you would, eventually the stupidity will catch up to you or you're just gonna have to admit that it's your fault why you're living paycheck to paycheck. So it creates some amount of accountability and because of that nice adrenaline rush that at least I get, when I realize I'm spending less than I had projected, it's addictive. And guess what happens over time? It becomes a habit because you want to spend less so you can feel good about yourself. And you know what I do? I reward myself. Whenever I spend less than I had projected, I take a percentage of that extra money and do something that I like. So you give yourself an incentive to do the right thing. Now, if when you compare your projected expenses to your actual expenses, you realize that dining out is why your food bill is exhausted every single month, here are some tips to curve that habit. I'm not gonna tell you to stop dining out because then you're gonna start living a life that has very little experiences as you're cutting back on expenses. Here are a few ways that you can maneuver this situation. If you're gonna dine out, try to eat something light at home before you go. That way you go to the restaurant on a stomach that's not empty. That does a few things. One, you can skip the appetizer, which is usually pretty pricey depending on the restaurant. Two, you will eat less from an entree perspective or you will crave less and get an entree that's a decent size. Drink up the free water that they give you. Don't go buying the bottled water now. They have filtered water, drink it so you can fill up some of that empty stomach space while you're at the restaurant. Also, you need to ask yourself, is the dessert necessary? Skip the dessert. You'll also skip some calories that you can probably do without if you're like me who need to cut back. I'll actually tell you a little secret. I buy these big bags of dark chocolate and I'm gonna pop up a picture here. And whenever I have a craving for something sweet, which is very infrequently, but I do have it and I'm not gonna deny it, I take out two or three pieces of these chocolate chips. Now, because they're dark chocolate, they leave this taste in your mouth that kills every craving. But at the same time, you're satisfying the need for that sweet taste on your palate. So skip the dessert and go home and eat two pieces of your chocolate and you'll be good. When you leave that restaurant, you need to update your budget with what you spent compared to what you had planned to spend. So immediately it hits you if you're overspending and you know you might have to skip next week's dinner if you spent too much or you know you can go because you spent within the limit. That constant accountability is so critical on this path. The thing is guys, you don't want to be that person who ate away their ability to achieve financial freedom. Also, you can cut back on buying ready-done food by cooking more at home. It's cheaper and it's usually healthier. And don't tell me that you don't have enough time because if you can spend 30 minutes or whatever this video is gonna be by the time it's done, probably 25 minutes to watch this video, you could have cooked some rice and some corned beef. So don't give me the excuse of, I don't have enough time. I have to go and buy the food because I just don't have the time to prepare it. That is crap. Remember, on this channel, we are not into the habit of making excuses. We get things done, my rock stars. Now, this next step 
to stop living paycheck to paycheck is so simple but can you believe it's one of the biggest causes of persons who can't sustain their living it's stop buying things you don't need you need food shelter and clothing if you want to buy more go get a new source of income it's simple the next step is bargain shopping now i absolutely love buying on sale but i also love buying quality over quantity so do your homework research prices shop around don't buy at the first price and don't try to go and buy somewhere because you want to rub shoulder with the joneses and then you find that you could get the item significantly cheaper if you had shopped somewhere else we have a way of allowing peer pressure and FOMO, which is the fear of missing out, especially when we look on social media and we see people enjoying certain things. We have a way of allowing that to result in us living beyond our means. We have to stop that. There's no way you're gonna stop living paycheck to paycheck if you're borrowing money to go to a party or if you're buying things that you don't need at the end of the day all it's gonna do is it's gonna leave you broke also as you're bargain shopping don't allow your ego to get in the way of using coupons and discount cards listen i use all my discount cards religiously you can't think about ego when you're trying to stop living paycheck to paycheck the next option is to manage your debt and because I've talked about this so many times in different videos and I'll pop them up here and I'll put the link in the description below I'm not gonna talk too much about it because there are three instances where you should borrow money and I share it in these videos here so you need to go and watch that video but if you have a lot of debt it's gonna be difficult for you not to live paycheck to paycheck because it's reducing your cash flow significantly and it's resulting in you having to either find new money or to cut back elsewhere or to live paycheck to paycheck as i said in one of my videos you cannot achieve financial freedom if you keep giving people your money and when you borrow and you are indebted what you're doing is giving people your money to spend theirs at a premium it doesn't make sense so unless you're borrowing money for these three reasons that I mentioned in this video you should desist from doing so the next step is to figure out ways to cut back now when you create that budget you need to look at the item where most of your money is going and then you need to determine how can you reduce that line item from a cost perspective so more than likely your biggest cost is going to be your mortgage or your rent is there an opportunity to go in and negotiate a reduced interest rate with your bank when we took our mortgage for one of our properties it was at nine percent with the market and the economy changing interest rate fell and we went back in and negotiated and got our mortgage down to seven percent guys you are the customer here you should be calling the shots the banks should try to serve you go in and have that conversation and see if you can free up some cash flow by getting a lower mortgage rate if you're living in a rental property you should always be on the lookout for something that's more cost effective sometimes when we make the sacrifice to live a little bit further away yes transportation can be an issue but by the time you add in the additional cost for transportation and the headache you may be saving a lot of money so consider that as well if you find that your electricity cost is a big chunk you could also look at changing out the bulbs that are in your house and if you have outside lights you can replace those with solar lights which aren't so expensive we have quite a bit of them available at our goffer store or on our goffer platform that you can use to replace your lights and the return on investment meaning by the time you put it in and you see that reduction in your electricity bill you are able to get ahead of that in about six months so it pays to change out your light fixtures also 
if you're spending electricity unnecessarily? Are you leaving lights on in rooms when you're not there? Are you leaving the TV on while you sleep? You need to be more conscious of your spending habits and when you start tracking them on a budget and you realize you're failing repeatedly, you will become a lot more cognizant of what it is that you need to change from a behavior standpoint and from a mindset standpoint to be able to stop living paycheck to paycheck. Another option for those who want to take it to another level is, let's say for example, your electricity bill is a big chunk of your cost. There are solar solutions out there that will allow you to make back your money within a year. And if you're in Jamaica, NHT actually has a solar loan where I promise you by the time you look at what you're paying, if you qualify for that loan, when you see what your payback is to NHT versus your electricity bill on a monthly basis, there's going to be an upside, which means immediately you increase your cash flow. So think about it. The last factor to consider why you may be living paycheck to paycheck is probably the most real one. It's the fact that you don't earn enough because I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you should get comfortable living paycheck to paycheck and teach you how to survive on minimum wage for example or teach you how to survive by living paycheck to paycheck we are all about achieving your greatness on this channel and achieving your wildest aspirations and also being your best self so I would be irresponsible and I wouldn't mean you any good if I sit here and teach you how to live paycheck to paycheck or how to make this work. That's not what this video is about. So if you're in a situation where you are living paycheck to paycheck and you find that you don't earn enough and that's the reason because you have exhausted all the other things I mentioned above and you realize you still can't make ends meet it simply means you need another stream of income. You need to consider a side hustle. And Goffa is a very good side hustle. And there are other side hustles out there. I'm actually gonna create a video soon that gives you nine amazing business ideas that you can look at. Go and explore business ideas that you can start. You can also monetize a hobby, as I say in many of my videos, to create another stream of income. So guys, that's it. I've shared with you a few considerations that you need to evaluate if you want to stop living from paycheck to paycheck. If you found value in this video, as usual, please don't leave without liking it. And if you have not subscribed yet, please do so. Thank you, my rock stars, for always tuning in. And I really appreciate you coming back, especially those of you who keep coming back and are always sharing ideas, providing feedback in the comments. I am so grateful. All the best. Until next time, walk good. Is which way the sun are gonna open? Look on the sky and tell me if it go behind the clouds or it come back out. Where they go? That means that they come out from the cloud. Right, so it's so now come out, so it makes everything move, not you. Eh? Right, and this one I got the opposite way. So that means it soon come out. Alright, let me see if we can let me see if we can put in a little bit more before it comes back out again, because just a while ago it warm me up. Yeah. No, it don't make me sweat. Anyway, let me go back to my video. I've changed for the better this time. I thought I would never be fine. I strive just to say I'm alright. And for the first time in a long time, I'm alright.